Hi, I'm Amber, welcome back to Cat Speeds, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my bi-weekly film reviews. I am coming back with this. I will warn you, I'm probably not going to be good at articulating my thoughts when it comes to films. I think I've already talked about this, that I don't really do so good with films, whereas I feel like I am better with books. But I do want to talk about the films I'm watching, so here we go. The first film that I watched is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I uh, was so excited for this film when I saw it was, there was going to be a B1 sit in the world again. I had to go see it in the theaters. So This is set se about 70 years before Harry Potter story begins, or even before Harry Potter was even born. It's about Ruth Gummerger, who wrote the book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is the 10th book that students from Hogwarts used for their classes. It's really about Newt's story and his life. And the book has mentioned, so it sounds like he was almost finished with his manuscript at this time. He's trying to rescue and save all these creatures, and he comes to New York to bring a certain animal to Arizona. Craziness ensues when his briefcase gets switched was another man's briefcase. I absolutely loved it. I thought the CGI was great, and I know some people had issues with that, but for me, I thought it was wonderful, and I thought this was a really fun, funny, great story with great characters, and I loved Newt, and I think it, his name was Jake. He was the non-match friend that he made along the way, and it was just really brilliant because it had its own story. It was original in the sense that it wasn't, it had nothing to do with Harry or his, or, their, or anything like that. I love the fact that there was subtle nods to things that were in the books, specifically the animals, like like the bull truckle, which is like one of my favorites that I saw throughout this film. It's just a really wonderful story. It was so magical, and I loved that because it had that same magical thing that the Harry Potter books had and it really just came to life in that sense. It came back, that magical, wonderful feeling. And I also loved that there are all these subtle clues to the big reveal, but you don't really notice them until the reveal happens and then you're like, oh my gosh, there were like all these clues and you didn't even realize they were clues and that was just so perfect. There are a few issues I did actually have with this film. The first thing is that you can tell that this is a first in the series. It did feel like it was an introduction. It did have its own beginning, middle, and end with an opening to what could happen in the next film, but it did feel like you were being introduced to a lot of things at one time, and I did feel like you could tell it was a first in the series because although Newt and Jake, and I might be wrong about his name, I apologize, it's been a bit since I've watched this, but Besides those two, the two main female characters, I felt like their characters could have been more developed and more fleshed out. I just, they kind of felt one-dimensional one at times, and although I get it, they're more like the side characters than anything, but I do feel like there needed to be more character development. The very last thing that was an issue, and I will say this, I do like Johnny Depp's acting abilities. I think that he does great with crazy, wacky-type roles, like... Type, like Captain Jack and the Mad Hatter, like I thought that he did great with those roles, and so I kind of expect him in those kind of roles, but I've always had a little bit of a hard time with him in more serious roles, so it's always been like a toss up, like if it's gonna work or not. And here it just didn't work out. You know, we barely had him in this film. I definitely feel like he didn't really mesh with the storyline, like it just felt, it just jarred me out of the, out of the film because it just, he was a little bit too weird, like, with his character, I just, it didn't feel right, like I felt like it was supposed to be more serious, more dramatic, and it just came off like, like it was a joke or something. Even though there were some issues, I absolutely loved this film, it had a great story, it had great characters, and I just can't help but love it, so I had to give it five stars. The second film that I watched is Beaches, starring Bette Midler. This is actually based on a book, which I did not realize until I literally watched it, so 
I will be linking up the book eventually. So this is really just about a friendship that where these two girls meet out at a beach when they're about nine years old, I believe, and their friendship throughout the years growing up and everything. I really enjoyed this film. It's a really good film. I think it's really strong. I liked the fact that it was totally focused on their friendship and it didn't turn into a cheesy rom-com. Overall, really nice and sweet and wonderful to watch. It was a really sad bit there, but it was predictable to see where it was going, where it was going. And I will say this, it's a kind of film that you can watch without really watching. You can be doing something else while you're watching and not really miss anything because it's the kind of film that you know what's going to happen, you know where it's going. I just think that it was a good film. I enjoyed it for what it was. So I guess three stars. And I like the music. I did like the music that was in it. That we already know. So there you go. Now on to the TV show that I'm going to be reviewing. Yes, it's not a film. But I had to talk about this, and that is Girl and Girls, A Year in a Life is the Revival. It's a four-episode thing where each episode is a season. And I was very disappointed in this revival because it didn't have that same thing that the original series had. Just didn't, it couldn't bring back that feel that the original series had for me. And I get that 10 years has passed and that it... It's hard to do that when you're trying to bring it to the, back into the present and trying to, like, make it work, I guess? I think maybe they should have just had, like, a full-out season and they should have just, I think, like, completely been fleshed out more. I just felt like you didn't get to really delve into their stories that much, even though I think that they handled the grieving process well. I just think that... There's just so many things missing here. One of the things that really bothered me about this revival was how stagey and fake it felt. It didn't really feel like I was in the Girl Girl's life. It just felt like I was watching it on stage and that is not the way it should have come off and probably not the way they meant for it to come off, but it did. The music, the sound, and the people were so different and not in a... Well, yeah, that makes sense because it's been 10 years different. Just, they're like, even some of the personalities of these people were completely different. Like, like Tom. He was not even Tom. That d didn't make any sense to me. Why? Why? Like, how can you change these people? It, it's so wrong. The music was just so different. It, it just didn't really feel like it jived with Gummo Girls and it didn't seem to really work for me. And there was this whole musical thing that happened and I'm just like 15, 20 minutes past and I'm like, what is the freaking point? It was just so nonsensical. And that was where the point where I started really, a lot of this was just filler. Like there, everything, there's a lot of filler going on here. And when they focused on Rory, and Lorelai, and Lou, and Emily, and all that, it really worked. I really appreciated those moments. There was just these moments where it was just so moving and everything. But at the same time, there is all these things that were going on that was just so much filler. And I'm just like, seriously? You only have four episodes and you're going to just fill it up with these random nonsense stuff? No. Just... No. Another thing is that there is a lot of issues being rehashed that already were hashed out in the original series. Like with Rory, it felt like Rory was going through the same situation that she was going through in her college years, and I'm just like, why? It didn't even feel like it's been 10 years for her, and it feels like by now she she should have already figured these things out. And I get sometimes you're going to struggle with your career, but this was like to the point where you just got out of college and you don't know where you're going with your career and you don't know what you're going to do. But it's, she's 32 years old now, people. It shouldn't be rehashed. And then like there was this whole April thing going on again and that really freaks me off, especially because they put it in there and then it's never talked about again. So again, issues that 
are rehashed over again. Ten years, it's been ten years, and none of these issues have been ha been resolved. Are you know why are there different issues? And yes, there is some different issues. I'll admit that, admit to that. But these new issues that come out, I felt was strange because they did. Warlock and Luke did talk about kids, sort of, in the original series. How could they have like just thrown that to the wayside? Ten years. I also feel like ten years and them not married, not not to have a kid. Like I can accept the fact that they don't have a kid, but it was hard for me to swallow the fact that they weren't married. I mean, I knew going in that they weren't going to be married because revival, of course, they're gonna have to, of course, they're gonna do it like that. But it just wasn't something I was happy with either. I mean, I really loved their wedding. It was so beautiful and sweet. But at the same time, it should have already happened. I never thought it was going to be like this, and it was not the way I envisioned it. The other very last thing is that there was no closure, and they said we were this was going to be the revival where we got closure for this. And I get that they were trying to do this full circle thing where Lori becomes Lorelai type thing, but no freaking closure. And that just really pees me off. It made this was a really disappointing revival for me, and so I think I'm gonna rewatch it to kind of like see if things get better for me. But after that, I'll probably never rewatch that revival. It'll I had to give it two stars. Those were the three things that I've watched in the past two weeks. Tell me down below if you watched any of these. I would love to talk with you down below about them. I would also love to hear what you've been recently watching. Thank you all so much for watching and keep smiling.